one of the wonderful things about the timing of this book when it was published was that it happened to come out uh, in the UK where it was first published, just on the cusp of the opening of the so-called transition to democracy in 2010, 2011. It's a happy story in many ways, following on a very sad one. The sad story, of course, is that it is my father's story, much of it. He wasn't able to get it published. In the 70s in America, there was a profound ignorance of what Burma was or where it was even. It was a great struggle always to make people interested or care about Burma. And my father, toward the end of his life, in a sort of premonition, I suppose, that he wrote this autobiography in a kind of white heat. And when he finished it, he did try to get it published. But anyone who knows about publishing even these days will know how much harder it was back then to have to get interest in a book about an obscure country and an obscure resistance. He did make a very great effort. I mean, he passed it around to some of his friends and in academia and in publishing. This brings me to why it came into my hands, because someone said, asked me recently, someone from Burma who had just read the book, he wanted to know why did I write his memoir and why did he write it himself? Well, he wrote his own memoir, but he gave it to me to ask my help in getting it publishable. And there are two reasons for that. One was that I had just started writing, so it made sense that he would ask for my help. And secondly, I think he had, in a way, it was kind of a carte blanche that he gave me because he said, well, you know, do it whatever you will. Um, and it was a tremendous vote of confidence. And at the same time, it was intimidating because there was this enormous responsibility I felt. Um, I mean, <laughs> this, was a, this was a big chunk of history. I was devoted to fiction. That's how I approach my own history. But I'd never really looked at this. And it was so hard for me looking at this manuscript to kind of um, be impartial and um, equable in the way that you need to be when you're editing a piece or you're taking on a piece like this. And I was making my own judgments. Anyway, I dragged my feet. I couldn't bring myself to, to do anything with it. So there was something like a 30 plus years hiatus, but it never left my consciousness. It was always a duty that I felt had to be faced. You know, through a whole series of events, which I describe in the book, I finally got to it uh, very, no, very roundabout day, finished it, and it just happened to coincide, as I say, with the opening up of the country where I was allowed to return after being also myself in exile for over 30 years. And not only was I allowed to return, but it was the very first time my books would be allowed in Burma. It was a, a, a very profound kind of homecoming on many levels. In a way, I was taking my father's story back to his homeland where he, he himself could not take it. And for me, my books, which were all about Burma, and which had never been read in Burma, was suddenly now read. So Golden Parasol has a very, very big emotional and spiritual significance for me, even though it's a kind of a strange undertaking because it was, it's a memoir based on a memoir. So it's not my father's memoir, but it's my memoir of his memoir.